Hello, everybody. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodwill. And over there, we have John Lewandowski. How are you doing, John? Hey, pretty good. Um, we would just like to give a quick announcement. We are having slight tech issues today. If we lag, glitch, or anything, um, we will switch to audio only. So you will see our backgrounds only. Um, so uh, we apologize for that, but <coughs> if, if that's what we have to go to to get our video done for you guys. That is what we will do today. All right. Um, today, the Nashville Predators took on the uh, Washington Capitals and Alexander Ovechkin. And the uh, Florida Everblades took on the Orlando Solar Bears in Astoro uh, before heading out to Atlanta for a three-game stint. So uh, we will see how that all goes. Um, before I get into this game, um, Roman Yossi, Tommy Novak and um, uh, Colton Sissons are all on the COVID uh, list, uh, part of the non-roster. Um, so uh, there's that. Um, so uh, it, it, it was kind of a one-sided game to start. Yeah. <laughs> the Nashville came out flat, like flat. Right. They, they had no mo at all coming into this game. And that's partially due to the fact that the NHL hasn't given them much time to, like with all the teams that had people out with COVID for a period of time, to practice. To get right. their life back under them, it's it's just not going to happen. And then when you have a team like Washington, who's played this whole time and didn't have to have games canceled with COVID, you know, you there's really a disadvantage there, right? And and that's my humble opinion opinion of of this to to start, but. Um, let's just say this. Uh, they beat him in the faceoff circle. They beat him in hits, beat him in blocks, beat him in giveaways. They have less than Washington. Um, so, I mean, all of a sense, the outside of the penalties, they did really well. <laughs> right. Um, so, uh, uh, scoring in the first was Lars Eller, his sixth this season with assists from Carlson, his 21st, and Ovechkin, his 26th. <laughs> and they say, Ovi, don't pass the puck. Um, then scoring at the 13-11 mark was John Carlson um, with his seventh with an assist from Nicholas Backstrom, his second, and Dmitry Orloff, his 11th. Uh, then scoring at the 18.52 mark was Nick Dowd, his fourth, with an assist from Carl Hagelin, his fifth, and Mike Kempney, his first of the season. So it was three nothing going into the second. I called John, and the only thing I said to him was "eek," because <laughs> it did not look good. No, it didn't. And Nashville comes out in the second with the herd line right away. Woo. Uh Fabro chipping the puck to Jano. Jano shoots it on net. Yakov Trenning cleans it up for his sixth of the season. Jado's 10th assist, Fabro 7th. Um, this goal I particularly wanted to talk about. Um, Luke Harper with his first... Or Luke Harper. <laughs> Sorry. Please, WWE, do not copyright me. I, I, I fumbled the name. 
Um, that would be Ben Harper. Luke Harper is in my mind for some reason right now. Um, with an assist to, with a beautiful assist from Illy Colvin in his seventh of the season. And Luke Cudden scores his fifth of the year. Tolvin and made that goal happen. Yeah. Oh, apologize, guys. I am really tired today. Um, and that also at the 7.38 mark. So 36 seconds later, Phil Forsberg scores a goal with his 14th of the season with an assist from Dante Favreau, his second assist of the night, and Mikel Granlin is 23rd of the season. Um, by the way, I thought I read that wrong, but um, then in the third, if Guinea Coos nets off uh, with his 10th of the season, with an assist from TJ Oshie, his 8th, and Carlson, his 22nd, Kuznetsov's 10th. Um, that goal in particular, there's a little bit of controversy, but I'm not sure whether or not the puck was in the net before the <sighs> net came off. Right. That's one of those, you could have that argument, but it's not a safe argument to have. Right. Because we're the ones that knocked it off the net. So if if we just knocked the net off, then yeah. Uh, and then scoring the empty netter was Carl Hagelin with his second with an assist from Dimitri Orlov, his 12th, and Carlson his 23rd. Carlson had one, two, three, four points today. Um the one thing I wanted to say is how um, heavier the penalties against Nashville were compared to um, uh, the uh, Washington Capitals because Wilson was there all game just being a pest like usual. And then when he gets caught for something, he cries about it. Right. Um, I'm not, I don't hate Tom Wilson. I don't like him when we play against him, but I don't right. hate him. Nashville was outshot every period. 11-6, 11-8, 15-6. So Soros had his work cut out for him. Soros did everything he could to stop that shot with Kuznetsov to the point where he went into the post so hard he knocked the net off. Right. So there's no real reason to be too mad about this game. Yes, our point streak is over. But we just needed to show the league, hey, you can do this, but uh, right. we're not going to go away. Um, McCarron, at the end of the game, gets a game misconduct and a, a, a 10 minute misconduct for instigating. <sighs> Tom Wilson also got the same penalty. Yeah. I don't get it. Um, I have a crap list today. Yay. Nick Cousins, Matthew Olivier, Tabasito, Gradland, uh, Alexander Carrier. Welcome back. Um, Saros stopped 32 of 36 with a point eight eight nine. Saros played a lot better than what his stats say because he kept a very good Washington team scoreless on 13 shots on the power play. Yeah. 
Um, Ilya Samsonov had his work cut out for him, but his stats are worse than Yos or Juice's. Uh, Saros had a 0.889. Um, Samsonov has a 0 0.850. Neither goalie had a particularly good game. Um, your referees were TJ Larksmore and Jake Brink. Um, let's hope we never run into them again. Uh, linesman Shindor Alfonso and Dan Kelly, head coach for Nashville, is John Hines, head coach for Washington, is former Nashville and coach Peter Laviolette. Scratches for Nashville were Phil Myers. Um, scratches for Washington was Justin Schultz, Daniel Sprong, and <laughs> Brent Leeson. The Nashville Predators are back in action tomorrow against the Columbus Blue Jackets. The Milwaukee Admirals were supposed to take on the Rockford Ice Hogs. That game is postponed due to the Ice Hogs having COVID. So in that yes. respect, the Admirals have also, before I get into the Everblades game, Ray called Jake McLaughlin, Robert Carpenter, and Xavier Bouchard. All right, so today, like I said, the uh, Everblades took on the Solar Bears. The Everblades outshot the Solar Bears 37 to 19. Uh, scoring on the power play first was the Everblades with a goal from Joe Pendenza with an assist from Nathan Perkovich and Ben Masala. That goal was on the power play at 121 in the first. Uh, then, uh, at the 357 mark, scoring shorthanded was Hunter Fegis with an assist from Tristan Langen. Uh, in the second period, uh, Ben Masala scores unassisted at the 655 mark. Um, and then Orlando puts up a twofer on us. Uh, the uh, Braden Barker scores uh, at even strength uh, with an assist from Tristan Langen and Rich Boyd. Um, and then uh, at the 1840 mark, Owen Robinson scores hit with an assist from Hunter Fegis. Um, then at the 501 mark in the third, Hunter Fegis scores a shorthanded goal, uh, putting them up for two at the time. Um, at the 1759 mark, Joe Pedenza scores with an assist from John McCarron and Jordan Sambrook. Should just call that the trip, wait, yeah, the triple J line. Mm. Um, I need the game sheet here. Um, Florida was one for Four on the power play. Orlando was over five. Uh, Cam Johnson was in debt for the Everblade, stopping 15 of 19, allowing four goals against. Uh, Barone, Bear, Brent Barone, I think that to be. I hope. I don't like being wrong there, but uh, he stopped 34 of 37 with three goals against. Um. Your three stars of the game, third star of the game was Tristan Langen with um, two assists. Uh, second star of the game was Ben Masala with a goal and an assist. And Hunter Fegis with two goals and an assist. Your referees were John Linder. Uh, there was no second referee, uh, so your linesmen were Charlie O'Connor and Jason Lorthy. Um, attendance at Hertz Arena was 6,988. So the Everblades uh, fall four to three to the Solar Bears. Um, as it currently sits for the Admirals, our next game is Saturday. Wait, 
our next game at home is Saturday. Our next game is uh, Friday. Uh, we play uh, Grand Rapids in Grand Rapids, and then they come back here. Right. Um, around the league today, the uh, – uh, The Hartford Wolf Pack beat the uh, Bridgeport Islanders. Is that former Everblade Zach Brazola? I think so. Because I think Brazola played for the Everblades last season, if I don't. There we go. Get a check on him. Yeah, man. Yes. Uh, he played for them in 2020, 2021. Uh, 15 games. Had uh, one goal, two assists. Also had an assist in the playoffs in 2020, 2021. So last season, yes, he did uh, join the team after finishing college last season. Okay. So former Everblade uh, Zach Brazola scores for the uh, Hartford Wolf Pack. Good to know their. Uh, good thing I know I, I have a pretty good memory. <laughs> mm. Um. Ah, I think it's another Everblade alum in the AHL. I'm trying to remember. I've seen so many coming through lately. <sighs> okay, he did not play in the ECHO. I thought he did. Um, the Iowa Wild beat the uh Oh, yes. The Hershey Bears beat Wilkes-Barre Scranton 6-1. to one. The Iowa Wild beat the Colorado Eagles 3-2. to two. Um, Marco Rossi scoring two goals over there for that game. Um, Rochester beats uh, Providence with uh, a uh, Everblade arch nemesis as far as scoring goals go, I believe that it to be Ari Nazarian, who has one game played with Rochester this season and one goal. Mm. Um, outside of that, um, nothing in the AHL uh, left. Um, the Chicago Winnipeg game was postponed, Pittsburgh, Toronto, Boston, Ottawa, Detroit was postponed, and Colorado versus Dallas is postponed. Um, tonight around the league, the Florida Panthers uh, beat the Rangers by a goal, score winning four to three. The New Jersey Devils beat the Buffalo Sabres four to three. Uh, currently in the first period, it is zeros across the board in uh, Vancouver versus Anaheim, 1-1 uh, one, one Se uh, Seattle versus Philly, and 4-2 to two Edmonton losing to St. Louis. Um, at the current moment, also, the IIHF has canceled all tournaments going into the month of January. So the women's U18 tournament gone, men's U18 tournament gone. Or the, um, so 
Um, that's where that sits. Uh, the Nashville Predators currently sit tied second in points. Um, well, after tonight, but uh, they will be in third tonight if the Saint score uh, with St. Louis holds up. Okay. Um, I mean, there's still a lot of games left. This is just one. Uh, we're also without our captain. Um, tomorrow at 6 o'clock <laughs> Central Time, so 7 o'clock Eastern Time. I, mean, I want to say like 5 o'clock Mountain Time and 4 o'clock like on the West Coast. The Preds will be taking on Columbus. Oh. Um, and um, this is a bitter rivalry that goes back to when the two expanded in the first place. Right. Um, after that, the Preds take a day off to prepare for their um, game against the Blackhawks that at the current moment at the current moment, is not postponed. So uh, we've got a good weekend of hockey coming for you. Um, uh, Um, the uh, Admirals have a few games, the Everblades have a few games, the uh, Preds have a couple games in that time frame also. You may see a little bit of fun from me and John on New Year's Eve in the afternoon. Not a hundred percent sure how much fun, but um, we are taking in another local sporting event. Uh, yep. Many of you know I've been a supporter of the Milwaukee Wave for a very long time, uh, going back to when they played at the Bradley Center back in the 90s. Um, when they moved to the Panther Arena, I had to choose between the Admirals and the Wave, and I chose the Admirals. Nine out of ten times, I hadn't gone to a Wave game up until we were back in the same building. And right. the minute we were in the same building, I went and bought season tickets. Because <laughs> mm. I don't have the com conflict. Right. I don't have to, you know, one of the luxuries of doing the podcast is, well, I have ESPN Plus on my phone. I have AHL TV on my phone. And for lack of a better term, I have Flow Hockey, which we are working on. Yep, we are. It will either be January or February, but it will be back. Um, but we are back. Um, also, those noting, um, even though we bring back flow hockey, if you, the Everblades, I know I hate doing this to y'all, but I have to keep reminding. If you guys play solo on the night, we're doing a graphic only. We cannot, we have to take that, you know, day to be with our families um unfortunately not that we don't want to do a show it's we like having happy wives right <laughs> so uh we will see you guys soon um i we will be back tomorrow actually so see you guys yep. tomorrow all right